Hello, my name is Peter Ferreira and uh, I'm the cellar master at Grainbeck uh, in South Africa. And yeah, what an unprecedented uh, situation we all face uh, throughout the international world. And yes, I guess it's even affected you guys back home. We are thinking of you, we pledging that you remain safe and that you play your part so we can get uh, the the virus right down so we flatten the curve uh, i'm here to talk about Grainbeck. as you know it's in the weinbow portfolio and um, it's really an exciting uh, selection of uh, sparkling wine from south africa Grainbeck is a specialist producer of uh, cap classique cap classique is the recognized term for bottle fermented sparkling wine made in the traditional Champenois style. So exactly like in Champagne, uh, we follow the same uh, principles and we can go into a lot of detail uh, in another presentation to express uh, the attention to detail that we do give, uh, giving you a beautiful portfolio of uh, sparkling wine to sell uh, in the US and specifically in your markets. Uh, I joined uh, Graham Beck uh, 31 years ago. Yeah, that is a lifetime, but uh, it's been an incredible journey. Uh, it is still today family owned. Uh, today it's owned by Anthony Beck, who also uh, has uh, an in import company in the US known as the Beck Family Estates. And uh, I'm sure those of you who know Clay Farmer has definitely been introduced to the beautiful selection of uh, Beck Family Estate wines in the US. My friend Alban will be speaking about the Oregon uh, portfolio uh, in the names of Angela, which is a Pinot Noir and recently uh, added a Chardonnay and uh, obviously Abbott's Claim but more about that from Alban, and I will concentrate on uh, Grainbeck. So Grainbeck was, uh, the main vintage was uh, started in 1991 in a place called Robertson. Robertson is uh, two hours east of Cape Town, and uh, it is uh, situated between two incredible mountain ranges, which uh, uh, it's like a, a rain shadow so uh, the area is semi-arid and uh, we have very little rainfall um, but today all our, uh, all our vineyards are irrigated and um, uh, you know we do it in a very professional way. Um, the advantage of the area of Robertson is three faults. It has sufficient sunlight hours which means we've got lots of sunshine to uh, mature our fruit to optimum ripeness for the process. Secondly, uh, we have the richest limestone deposits. It's all natural deposits uh, of the total Western grape where 95% uh, of all grapes are grown. And um, we have a, a very interesting dynal shift now, dynal shift is the temperature difference between day temperature and night temperature. In summer, we can have a good 100 degree warm day and uh, at night it will uh, come down to at least 70 degrees. So uh, it's a huge shift and that obviously helps to preserve uh, the natural acidity in the, in, in the grapes and that it gives a beautiful backbone and structure to our portfolio. We have a specifically designed uh, cellar purposely made for the process of Cap Classique. And uh, uh, again, we can share some more detail uh, in another opportunity to you. Um, but today I would like to talk about uh, our various ranges uh, in the portfolio. Uh, we start off with uh, three non-vintages. Um, as you can see, um, they're all a, a rectangular label and um, they're all 
will speak of the house style. We have we have developed uh, the blend by uh, using Chardonnay and Pinot Noir and uh, normally in equal amounts and uh, we we will take you through them. So these are three. We start off with what we used to call the bliss uh, and sadly during lockdown this is the sort of last opportunity of Grainbeck wines that I can share with you um, but uh, it is uh, you will see a slight label change and I urge you to go to our website uh, www.grainbeck.com uh, and you would find uh, all the information including the spec sheets if you want to have a little bit more technical data. So it's known as the Bliss and the new labeling, we call it the Nectar Bliss. Nectar uh, is uh, an incredible fast growing category uh, back here at home. And um, it is really uh, to show the world there is life beyond Prosecco. Um, Nectar uh, is a reference to a little bit more sugar than a brute style. Uh, you would notice that uh, the other two non-vintages that I'm showing you is the white blend of Chardonnay Pinot Noir and the rosé blend of um, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. And um, they uh, have a brute classification. Um, and then uh, we will have a uh, discussion on our vintages uh, and that for a little bit later. So uh, if you would allow me, I will um, take you through the Bliss. Bliss Nectar um, has uh, got uh, 22 to 28 grams, depending on the bottling uh, of sugar. Um, and with a natural acidity in the wine, the wine still shows beautifully fresh. Um, it is uh, made uh, as a blend on its own. It's very important to understand that all these wines have specific niche identities, which relates back to the vineyards, where uh, we will make special selections. Myself and my winemaker, Pierre de Clerc, uh, sits together and we will go through a array of uh, different base wines uh, to uh, make the final selections for each blend. Um, it is important that uh, these uh, individual components all have a opportunity to be the cherry on the top. Uh, we don't uh, sort of discard it immediately, we will actually have um, all the components on a sort of a horizontal area where we will taste everything. A vintage like 2020, which has just uh, been completed earlier this year, uh, we have 132 different components. So uh, it goes through a lot of tasting, uh, but this is how we do our selection. If uh, you think about the brand pyramid, where we will have the icon on the top, the vintage collection uh, on the next level and then uh, the non-vintage on the bottom level. We as a winemaking team, we will turn that uh, pyramid upside down uh, to allow every little component to be recognized. So uh, for the Bliss, um, the white wine, uh, there is no skin contact involved and it's clearly identifiable by the color. Uh, um, what we do with uh, the Bliss uh, white blend and the Brut white blend is that we will choose the stronger component of Chardonnay to any, give the wine its entry. So we're expecting to see a little bit of lemons and limes, very classic uh, lemons and limes, still showing beautiful freshness. Uh, Keeping in mind that uh, the nectar, that little bit of sweetness is really there just to fill the palate and um, you know, give the wine a little bit more volume. So Chardonnay, uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir on uh, the Bliss Nectar. And it's fascinating, 
if we tell people this has got 22 grams of sugar, they say, oh, wow, that's too much. But uh, beautiful balance with the natural acidity. Keeping in mind not one of our wines uh, undergoes any malolactic. We want to retain the freshness of acidity in the wine uh, to make sure that we have uh, it very typical to the house style. So uh, the blessed nectar, um, beautiful as aperitif. If you've had a tough day at the office, even during lockdown and you have one of the, just a glass of this, you would find that your palate is beautifully clean, well stimulated by that little bit more sweetness and uh, pretty much puts you in the right frame for whatever happens after that. So bless nectar, as I said, um, the change of labeling, um, but um, you know, we have seen uh, in your markets that s some markets still have the old label, which is the bliss and uh, the new, new one. And again, I refer back to the website. Uh, I will make sure that uh, Winebow is well informed about this. You would see it's got a little bit more, a little bit curves, um, and it says uh, Bliss Nectar. So uh, that that is uh, the the one. So uh, uh, I hope that wine uh, that that is clear for you. Um, secondly, is really our little mainstay. Um, uh, it is a wine that we started 30 years ago and um, it is uh, it's really our sort of main calling card. It's the Grainbeck Brut, uh, always a blend of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir in equal amounts. And fortunately, when these wines come into the market, uh, we declare on the back label, we declare the percentages on, on the labels just to authenticize um the, the 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 blend in there um we would find that uh, in some years we have two or three percent more chardonnay heavy or then the following blend could be a little bit more pinot noir driven but that detail is on the back label in uh, in the us so um Grainbeck Brut again, uh, our non vintages is a, a style of aperitif. I guess uh, there's elegance and finesse, which is sort of the golden thread that runs through all of our wines. And uh, we, uh, we have uh, the Grainbeck Brut. Again, uh, as I did mention, on the white blends, we want the Chardonnay to be the entrance on the palette. And when we go and speak about the rose non vintage, you will see that it is actually slightly more Pinot Noir driven, um, more of that now. Also a beautiful color, beautiful persistence of bubble and um, anything, uh, again, beautiful lemons and limes, a little bit more citrus flavor uh, on the nose. Remember now it hasn't got all that little bit of ca cotton candy. Uh, as the extra little bit of sugar. This is uh, in a brute classification. Our brute uh, is between 9 and 10 grams per litre of residual sugar. And uh, beautiful, persistent mousse, very soft and gentle. There's an element of creaminess that does come through. Um, another thing about our non-vintages is that we have a perpetual reserve that we have uh, for uh, the final blend. So when Pierre and I decide on this year's blend, we will uh, look at adding between 6 and 10% of our perpetual reserve. Now perpetual reserve means it is a selection of all the old wines, all wines that we cho choose to take to reserve as one unit. Um, we've adapted uh, the perpetual re reserve to a little modern Solera system because uh, after harvest is done and our new blends are made up, we will uh, actually bring our perpetual reserve into the barrels and keep our barrels healthy that way. So. A little bit of oak in there, but the sensation of oak is completely neutral because the, the selection of 
all our oak together most probably will equal to about 12 years if we had to make a common blend uh, out of that. So beautiful entry of lemon lime, touch of citrus, and then on the palette, the Pinot Noir to me just fills the palette beautiful and uh, yeah, makes one try some more. Right, it brings us to uh, the non-vintage uh, rosé. You can see much more of a silver pink. We will talk about the color variation when we get to the vintage. But um, some of our Pinot Noir, due to the logistics and our geograph geographical selections where these grapes come from, have a little bit of, uh, we call it shake, rattle and roll. It is really, it's a, it's a tr transition period of bringing the grapes from one area to the winery for process and during this time uh, the grapes in the fruit bins will shake and roll um, depending on you know how rough the road surface is and uh, it will uh, allow us to extract a little bit of color without sort of maceration so this is a, a very gentle way of allowing us to have a little bit of uh, color uh, in some of our Pinot Noirs, which will naturally become the base of our rosé. So we don't make a white blend and add three or four percent red wine in there to call it rosé. We actually will take that selection. Now during uh, our selection process, naturally all the sort of deeper use of the Pinot Noirs will be sort of a natural base to the selection of our rosé non-vintage. It does differ to the vintage but I will uh, tell you about that now. Again, on the rosé, because of that little bit of skin contact, the Pinot Noir is much more of a, a, a leading uh, entry. And uh, again, on the contrast to the non-vintage brute, our rosé, we, uh, we will have the uh, Pinot Noir lead the wine into uh, into the palate or onto the palate so beautiful light strawberry raspberry and uh, even uh, at the youthfulness of this wine there's even a little bit of a sour sour cherry beautiful aromatics nearly like a floralness as well um, on the nose Beautiful, much more weight, initial weight from the Pinot Noir, but as the wine rolls down the tongue, you can see the much more sort of uh, lighter, sort of nearly like a zestiness coming through. And obviously that is the support that the Chardonnay gives in this blend. Again, the percentages uh, of the Rosé will be on the back label. And uh, another interesting thing uh, before I forget, you would notice uh, on the bottom left hand corner there will always be uh, the date of disgorging. We would uh, declare all our, on all our bottles, we will declare uh, the date of disgorging. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that 100% but uh, it is over there on the bottom left hand side and uh, disgorged in February. 2019 and uh, discoursed in January 2019. So these wines that I have here has now been uh, uh, pr pretty much one year on cork and the wine is still beautifully fresh. Again, stylistically, we are looking at uh, uh, freshness, finesse and elegance rather than a full uh, vertically rich thing. And again, to be successful uh, in the markets is to have this golden thread running from vintage to vintage. So uh, consistency and continuity of our house style is extremely important. And, um, you know, it's uh, really uh, there to stay. And the only thing, if your customer, if your customer doesn't want to do champagne on the day, this is the best alternative. So uh, 
do have this wine to show uh, your customer uh, or the wine buyer uh, always make sure that you've got one uh, one of these bottles in, uh, in your bag Cap Tassic again is uh, the reference to the method uh, exactly like in Champagne but it's uniquely South African and uh, it is our expression and it's also an expression and term that nobody else can use in the world so uniquely South African um, we talked about our uh, non-vintages uh, we talked about the Bliss Nectar we talked about the Brut uh, non-vintage and we uh, talked about the Rosé uh, uh, as a point of departure when uh, it comes to um, um, our vintages uh, is that we do 100% of the vintage so they are the best selections of Pinot Noir to express it in a rosé the best selection of Chardonnays to express it as a Blanc Blanc 100% Chardonnay and we also have introduced a wine called Brut Zero, which is an extended lease contact time uh, period uh, um, um, of, uh, of extending the lease contact time. And uh, we'll uh, take you through them individually. I did, however, forget to tell you about our lease contact time. Currently, uh, we are uh, on 16 months on the lease on the non-vintages. In South Africa, we have a minimum requirement currently at nine months. And in the 2021 vintage, it will move to a minimum of 12 months. So we're well over the th minimum threshold of uh, our Cap Classique. And uh, uh, obviously during lockdown, we naturally will gain a little longer extended time on the lease which will make these wines even more beautiful so uh, look out for them and uh, we will talk about them at an, another point at a later stage um, as we would blend for the non-vintage rosé uh, the wine on this side uh, we would blend for color remember you would notice that uh, our vintage rosé is far more of a sort of natural salmon pink color rather than uh, uh, it is blended. This is made in a unique way, so uh, I think you can see there clearly uh, the, uh, on the color, just once again. And um, uh, make it in a very unique way. It's not taking two components, the, Pinot Noirs with different uh, color use and blending it with Chardonnay. This is actually a co-pressed way of getting a natural blend. Yes, you've heard right. So what we do is we would uh, fill the press with uh, four to five loads of Pinot Noir and we will fill it with one portion of Chardonnay. So uh, the ratio is always about an 80-20 split in that way as we fill the press. Uh, yes, this is not a mistake, but this is how we create this magic sort of salmon pink onion skin color. Um, no skin contact involved. Uh, the percentage of our current rosé, which uh, is the 2014, uh, is 85% uh, Pinot Noir and 15% uh, Chardonnay. Um, our vintage selection will always uh, be a minimum of four years of lease contact time. Uh, champagne, most champagnes that go to the market is less than three years on the, on the lease. So uh, the extended time on the lease definitely brings much more brioche, sort of yeasty aromatics uh, that we're all looking for um, uh, when it comes to uh, vintage uh, sparkling or cut classic. So uh, beautiful, beautiful color, uh, beautiful sort of rich raspberry, cherry flavors uh, on the nose. Even the nose is a little bit more complex and sort of creamy.
wow, immediately the impact on the palate is just so rich and uh, really rewarding and um, yeah, absolutely simply delicious. Uh, and it's amazing for uh, a little more buck uh, in terms of uh, the price point, you get so much more. So uh, again, uh, this is a golden opportunity when we all can get back into work is to make sure that these bottles also uh, has, a, has a place in your bag uh, when, uh, especially when we come as winemakers and we work with you in the markets. I think it's extremely important to uh, a lot of people would know our non-vintages and it's time that we show them the impressions of uh, vintage. Uh, there's a lot of more added value to our vintage range. A beautiful impact. The wine still remains quite solidly on the palate. Beautiful richness, and um, yeah, it's a nice to. Again, uh, the date of disgorging on the bottom left, as I mentioned before, it's on all of our bottles. We have a vintage date. Uh, this is 2014. It was disgorged in June 19. So this wine is very close on to five years on the lease, and. Uh, you can feel the impact and impression. So uh, beautiful wine to, to keep in mind. There is uh, the vintage uh, rosé. One of my favorites, ultimate favorites, is the Blanc de Blanc. Um, in some markets, you still have 14. Uh, and in uh, one or two other markets uh, is uh, the 15 vintage. But always, uh, Clay is on top of his game. He will be able to always inform you when the new vintage is available uh, in your markets. Uh, Blanc de Blanc uh, is 100% Chardonnay and um, you can see the beautiful lime green color on uh, the vintage rosé, ah, vintage Blanc de Blanc, excuse me. And uh, uh, it's just the style that we love. Um, our Robertson area with the highest natural limestone the beautiful uh, day and night temperature shift, the dynal shift, and uh, the incredible amount of beautiful sunshine hours uh, makes this an absolute joy and pleasure to produce. 50% uh, of the Chardonnay that uh, is selected for um, the Blanc de Blanc is actually fermented in barrel. Yeah, this is not an oak version of Chardonnay with some bubbles in it. It is actually just to give you that creamy texture um, on, uh, on, on the palate. So I, uh, I really love this. So 50% of the Chardonnay in barrel, which is a maximum of three months. Excuse me. We did hear that there was a burst pipe up on the road, so unfortunately we do have some uh, movement during lockdown. But I guess it's a crisis, so I hope they can repair the water leak. Um, so 50% uh, of the Chardonnay selected from barrels. Our age of barrels run from uh, uh, a few new barrels every year. We buy anything between 5 and 10 new barrels and the oldest barrels is up to 20 years old so the selection of chardonnay from the barrel will be most probably between seven and eight or up to nine years in age so we're talking of neutral oak but definitely it brings uh, complexity brings dimension and that creamy texture um, then it is blended with um, our uh, stainless steel fermented uh, chardonnays and um, beautiful thing, this is also 100% Robertson fruit. So uh, it really tells you about the terroir and the typicity of what Chardonnay in Robertson does. It's interesting over the years um, how uh, our fellow competitors have all got to understand that uh, fruit from Robertson is really a critical uh, part 
of uh, their makeup. So uh, yeah, I think Graham Beck has led the way there. So let's go to the wine. Beautiful lime green color. Uh, beautiful soft persistent sort of lemon uh, a beautiful sort of lime zest uh, nose brightness on the on the nose with beautiful texture texture is a very important part of uh, our Blanc de Blanc and it just makes it so creamy the bubble even feels much more refined again a wine that has spent uh, a minimum four years on the leaves and um, it's just absolutely super it's really sublime uh, the brightness really lingers all the way through on on the palette absolutely delicious so the blonde blonde uh, and again, depending on uh, the vintage that you have in your market, uh, please visit our website and uh, it will uh, give you the detail um, of uh, the wine, the spec sheet uh, and a little bit more extra information on that if uh, I've maybe missed, missed something. The next wine is uh, our uh, Brut, Reserve, uh, Brut Zero. Um, 2012 is uh, in the market and um, the reference to zero is no dosage added or no sugar added in the final stage. The final stage of uh, Cap Classique, it's exactly once we've had sufficient least contact time, the wine is then riddled uh, where we move the yeast to the neck of the bottle the bottles remain upside down then they go through the disgorgement which is where the neck is frozen and we then remove the yeast from the wine and at that point where we add various different sugar levels as we would add 22 grams of sugar here 9 to 10 9 to 10 grams here only 6 grams in the rosé five to six grams in the um, Blanc Noir Blanc and with this we will actually use the exact same wine that's in the bottle to top it up so the reference to zero is no sugar added so it is a wine that is a little bit more healthier uh, it is definitely the wine with the least calories uh, in our portfolio and uh, Pierre and I will make a selection uh, of the very best that we can see longevity in each of those components. It's important because this wine will stay on the lease for minimum six years on the lease to give uh, the wine its natural balance. So this is a 2012. It was discoursed in May 17, a wine that has had nearly six and a half years uh, on the lease. By extending the lease contact time we we can show the wine without makeup. To me dosage that sugared wine is a little like lipstick and eyeshadow. How sexy or how good or sweet must the wine be but with this the intention is to show it. It's like a naked wine really. It really shows all the intrinsics. So in the 2012 vintage, we had 78% Pinot Noir. That is why it has a slight pink, pink tinge to it. Um, uh, and the balance of 22% Chardonnay. So immediately much more yeast expression. We've moved from four, between four, four and a half years to uh, nearly six and a half years. So the impact of the yeast is much bigger. So uh, again, beautiful impression, complex, complex nose. It's really like nearly like sort of a roasty, almondy, savouriness even on the on the nose. And 
and you would never, never guess that there's no sugar. I think uh, that extended time on the leaves just brings sacrosity in a way, you know, and it's most probably in the form of complex tertiary flavors that has been imparted from the yeast. And you would never say this wine is completely burnt dry. It's still got a beautiful balance and uh, it is uh, really beautiful. Mm. Absolutely stunning. So just to recap, um, we have the beautiful portfolio uh, of uh, our non-vintages. We have the expression in brut classification. We have an expression of nectar, as I mentioned. And soon in your markets, we will be adding our rosé nectar, non-vintage. So those are the four non-vintages. And currently we have our um, three expressions in the vintages. We take the best selections of Pinot Noir as to express it as a vintage rosé, the best selections of Chardonnay to express it as a Chardonnay Blanc de Blanc. And then for longevity, we will decide and it's not every year that we find uh, sufficient longevity for a wine to stay six to seven years on the lease. It really would depend. Uh, currently, we have the, the 2012. There is no 13. So the next vintage you should be looking out for is the 2014. So uh, in that is the selection. And uh, if, we, if we manage to get your customer to understand the... The beautiful rise in quality uh, in terms of uh, price point ratios uh, in this we are going to introduce you to our prestige cuvee uh, but that needs to be like a separate little chapter uh, and uh, again uh, I wish you well it is really difficult times we all all having we are in complete total lockdown back home lake uh, in south africa as well and uh, yeah we sh sh we share uh, you know our uh, importance of playing our part and uh, again uh, i do wish you well during this time with your close family and uh, uh, be safe and uh, as we would say um, you know I'll just show you a little thing uh, as as we can show you most probably if you turn uh, the foil and you start unwrapping it it says uh, I'm celebrate what matters and um, it is really it is this time that we have to to do it and um, yeah a toast to all of you at Winebow wishing you good luck and hope that we can visit you soon and assist uh, taking Grainbeck to the next level thank you so much <music>